Hi, everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we're going to be talking to you about trekking the national parks. But before we do, let's get into our pounds and inches segment. This is the part of the review where we tell you what we're trying to do to achieve better health in our life. All right, so a few episodes ago, I talked about how I was doing intermittent fasting, and I am still doing that. I haven't missed a day yet. I'm on day, whatever, 18, so almost three weeks. Uh, but I'm getting a little frustrated. I haven't seen a whole lot of results yet, and that's partially because I'm not doing great with what I'm doing in that small window of time. So my goal now is to kind of up my activity level and limit some foods that I've been overindulging in. Um, and that's going to be hard going into the holidays, you know, especially limiting the time frame. We always have a big breakfast at Christmas and all that kind of stuff and Thanksgiving we have like two giant meals and okay well one of those is going to have to get sacrificed and have to choose better options while I'm there and less of them so that's kind of my struggle but also I'm looking forward to uh, the next step. All right. Well, today, like I said, we're going to be talking about trekking the national parks and it's really fun because what is this game about? Literally trekking the national parks. So let's have Ryan show you what that might look like. Here is the board for Trekking the National Parks. You randomly place all those little kind of gems all over the board on all these different spots here. Those all different represent different national parks of the United States. On your turn, you can do a number, number of things. You can either draw more of these cards or you can move based off the number on the cards. So if I had that little guy there, I could move four spaces. So it'd go one, two, three, four. Wherever I land, I take that gem. You can claim a park card or you can occupy a major park which we'll get to those in just a moment. So during the game, you're kind of moving around, you're collecting the different stones from all these different spots. And at the end of the game, there's gonna be points awarded for, you know, things like whoever has the most blue stones, whoever has the most yellow stones, that kind of thing. And there are also prizes for second place. When you draw cards, you can either draw a mystery card face down from the pile or select one of the ones that's face up in a lineup. In addition to the numbers on the cards, there's also different symbols on the cards, and those are going to be used to claim park cards and to occupy uh, major parks as well. So let's take a look at what those look like. All right, to claim one of the park cards, you need to go to the named national parks, so in this case, like Olympic National Park or Theodore Roosevelt National Park, and you need to discard the symbols on the cards. So you would need two separate canoes, two separate fires, in order to go to the Theodore Roosevelt Park, cash that in to get those 10 points. There are 10, 7, or 5 points based off kind of how easy they are. But there are also 6 major national parks. You only deal out 3 at the beginning of the game, and they're there the whole game. When you go there and you cash in those things, so you, you know, discovered 2 canoes to go to the Everglades, instead of taking that card, instead, you put one of your little tents there. You, sometimes you get an immediate benefit or a, sta you know, a static ability that's going to be there for the rest of the game. In this case, it says... You get to trade a stone with someone else in the game. It's going to help with those majorities later on at the end of the game during scoring. This one says you get to add one extra movement. So when you discard a three card, you get to go four spaces instead of just the normal three. You can combine cards for movement. So you can discard a one and a two together in order to move three spaces. However, you only get to pick up the stone from wherever you end. If you wanted to spend two separate actions, one for the one and another for the, the two movement, you could pick up both gems of wherever you ended. You do get two actions per turn, so it could be move and pick up a stone, and then draw a card, or it could be draw a card and then occupy a major park, or it could be move, move, it could be draw a card, draw a card, any combination of those things. So that's kind of what you're doing in the game. You're drawing cards, and you're using those cards to either move around, discarding them for the numbered value, or you're discarding them as the symbols in order to claim these parks and to occupy those major parks. At the end of the game, the scoring is going to be the park cards that you've collected, the major parks that you are occupying, and then the bonus points you've awarded for having the most different kinds of stones. Whoever has the most points wins. I really enjoy the theme of this game, that you're traveling all across America and just going to different parks and um, how the the pieces on the card that you would need to achieve that make sense. So you have to get a mountain card if you're going to the Rocky Mountains and stuff like that. I just really like the theme of this. Yeah, we actually had a chance to play this game with the designer. Uh, this is a couple of years ago. We played an earlier version of it, um, but it was fun to see the new changes that they had made and they all work out pretty well. Side note, I didn't know we were playing with the designer until he told us. So. It's like, oh, by the way, I'm the designer. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the story. It actually has a really cool backstory, too. Yeah, it's a really cool backstory because he's actually gone to all of these. All the pictures, were the pictures that pictures he's taken? No. 
Okay. But anyway, all the parks are pictures of the actual park, so it's not um, artwork, and it's kind of fine to see that. But he, it was like a goal of his to go and see all the national parks. And on the inside of the box, there's like this story about how the game came to be. And I love the origin story of this game. Yeah, this game, as I'm the kind of the main uh, setter, upper, tearer, downer teacher of yes, games. It is. Yep. Uh, and I'm happy to report that this game is super easy to set up, super easy to tear down, and super easy to teach. We were able to teach it to our six year old even, and she had zero problems with the gameplay. I think the biggest highlight about this game is that it would appeal to a lot of people who I wouldn't necessarily call board gamers, are not huge hobbyists. And I think the fact that a game can appeal to people who aren't necessarily in the hobby is a huge win. One of the things that we're starting to really like is multi-use cards in games. So in this case, just really simply, there's a number and a symbol. And you can use it either for the number to move around or as the symbol to cast it in for one of the uh, national parks. And I thought that was a really clever way and really simple way to, to have a multi-use card. I enjoy the board. It's really big. It's really beautiful. The cards are pretty. They're huge cards. Your trekking pieces, they're huge chunky pieces. Um, and then the gems that are on the back are all across the board. It's, it's really, really pretty. Um, but it might have been just a little overproduced. Uh, you could use any type of cube for those gems. And then the bag that they're they're held in could have... Um, it's like this like leatherish type of bag. I, it, it was it was really nice and it's really pretty to look at. I just wondered if it was overproduced. It's almost like a deluxe version, but just the regular version. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's exactly what it was, 100%. I, I, yeah. I like it when people do both options. That way you can have a more affordable choice, plus the more. If, want to up, yeah. if you want to upgrade your stuff, you can have the deluxe version, but you didn't really get the choice with this one. Yeah. But it is really great. All the components are great, so I recommend that part of it. Um, another thing is... Um, we were, you know, we taught our daughter Ticket to Ride, and a lot of people have compared this game to Ticket to Ride. Um, now there's, I'm not sure I agree 100%, but there are some similarities to be drawn there. And one of the things that really helped her learn Ticket to Ride was on those route cards that show, you know, connect New York to Seattle or whatever, it shows you kind of where on the map New York and Seattle is. This had these really big, nice cards with these beautiful pictures and the symbols on them, but it doesn't show you where they are on the map. So, like, she's six, you know, she doesn't know that geography. Now, granted, this game is for, says 10 plus on the box, so maybe we're just, this is just an us issue for our six-year-old, but um, when it says Florida, she doesn't know where Florida is on a map. It says, you know, American Samoa National Park. She doesn't know where American Samoa National Park <laughs> I wasn't sure I knew, and, you know. Well, the card lets you know what state it's in. But yeah. that doesn't mean anything to a six-year-old. So it's probably just an us problem, but it would have been cool to have just a little, somewhere on this really, really yeah. large card, something that's the, pictor pictographically showing this is where this is on the map. The good thing about that um, is that the card is open information, so as they're laid out, because anybody can achieve that goal, so it's not like it's going to affect strategy for anybody playing when we show her as a card comes out where those are. And it's a good excuse to learn geography. This does have a kind of an educational um, opportunity there as well. So this is, here's the Everglades, here's all the different national parks, and here's where the different states are. And so there is some teaching moments there as well. And it's, it's I wouldn't call it an educational game necessarily, but it's got a lot of those educational moments. And plus just the theme of national parks kind of has that educational vibe to it. So very cool. So overall, I really enjoy when a game can appeal to people who aren't necessarily hobbyists, but hobbyists would enjoy, and this definitely hits that. Yeah, it's super fast, super fun. Uh, it does, it's, you know, it's beautiful to look at, uh, and we had a really great time with it. All right, well, that is our thoughts on trekking the national parks. If you want to see our reviews as they come out, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. If you like what you're watching, go ahead and click that like button. You can also follow us on Instagram under Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. You can also see the games we're playing as we're playing them by following us on Instagram. That's going to be under Ryan and Bethany. You can also talk to us on Twitter. That's under Ryan and Bethany 1. And then if you want to see a behind the scenes of what we're doing in our lives to achieve better health, Follow us, follow our blog, and that's on Board Game Geek under Pounds and Inches. All right, well, thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.